just change your mindset and I started thinking more like a business. Once I started thinking like a business, then I'm moving like a business. People respect me and then that's when I started seeing a lot of sales as well. Because it's not a hobby, this is a business. You're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur when you sell beads. Yo, 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 this is your girl Shada Goddess, emphasize on the goddess. I'm a music producer from Miami, Florida. I've been making music for over about 10 years now. I'm a multi-instrumentist, producer, entrepreneur. I wear many hats. So my dad, he was born in Guyana. I'm a first generation Guyanese and my mom is a first generation um, Bahamian. I always wanted to do music when I was a kid. I would pretend to play the guitar, piano and drums in my room like mm, as a kid because I was just so fascinated about it. Fun fact, I can actually play those things now. So education is very important. And as I got older, I wanted to learn how to play piano. I would beg my dad, please let me learn how to play. But I was the type of kid that I would learn something, then quit. So he didn't want to invest because that's very expensive. But by the grace of God, when I went to high school, I was enrolled in a piano class. So I, my dad was big on education. I was like, dad, for me to pass this class, I need a piano. So I kind of used that as, you know, I got to do my homework, buy me this piano. So he bought the piano and then I was just hooked on it ever since then. I came across this piece. It was a classical piece by Chopin called Fantasy Impromptu. And that was one of the most amazing things I ever heard. And that really, really made me love music even more. Just listening to classical music as well. My father had a role in shaping me, making me be more disciplined. He's a very disciplined man himself. And I'm very passionate about music. So it was very easy for me to be disciplined in something that I'm already passionate about. In college, I around other music majors, and they rap and they sing, and they will always hit me up like, do you make beats? You play piano? And I'm like, nah, I don't. And then my friends in the neighborhood I grew up with, everyone's a rapper. <sighs> oh my God, everyone's a rapper. All my cousins rap. And people will just keep encouraging me, like, you know, you should try it. You already play piano, you already know music theory. And I'm like, you know what, I should try it. So I teamed up with another um, music major in my college, and we made our first beat, it was terrible, but I remember loving the experience of just creating something from scratch, just playing something, laying it down, and then just building it up from beginning to end. That was really um, exciting for me. I definitely feel like I have. I feel like the reason why I'm such an amazing producer because I went to school and I studied music and then I learned my instrument. Now there are amazing producers that don't have to do that and that's great, but for me, it definitely helped me and it just built my passion even more for music. The fact that I can create music and I can also perform it live and exchange that energy with the audience just makes it even 10 times more for me. But you don't really necessarily need to go to music school. You know, as long as you have a passion for it, you're willing to learn. It doesn't hurt though. It doesn't hurt. It can definitely help you, make you more efficient, make you faster when you create melodies or loops. So I recommend doing it because it made me who I am today. Trick Daddy, Trina, Pretty Ricky. <laughs> I love Pretty Ricky. That, that was a, another good one. There's so many I can't think of right now. Grind Mode is another one. I don't know if people know about that. Miami has this sound and also we have our dance too. We do uh, B.I. Those who from Miami know what I'm talking about. We do the Wu-Tang, we do the Spider-Man. So we have different dances along with different music that correlates with that. And sometimes I do throw that in my music as well when I'm making dance music, just to let them people know, let people feel that Miami culture and vibe as well. When I'm about to quit, there's always someone that reached out to me that doesn't know me. I don't know them. They're not asking for anything. They're not gaining nothing from going out their way to let me know how much they love my music and how much their beats inspired them to write a song, to connect with the music. And that's what music did, does to me. It makes me be able to connect and it makes me be able to express how I feel because words is not my strongest thing, but music is. And the fact that I'm able to reciprocate that energy to someone else and they were able to do it to something else, to someone else, is just inspiring. And that what makes me keep going. Just that little interaction with someone I never met and them just telling me how much I inspired them. When I first started in 2017, I think it was for maybe two months and I quit. <laughs> I quit because it was hard. Like I post my video on YouTube and get no plays. I only got like one cell and I think it was by accident. I don't, I don't know. It was weird. It was random. But I quit and then I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to not do it. A couple years passed. I'm like, you know what? 
I really love music and I feel like this is my passion. I never gave it a full opportunity. I never really go all in on myself. It's a disservice. I need to do that because if I'm going to succeed, I have to believe in myself. It starts with me. I'm the foundation. Once it starts with me, then I'm able to do whatever I put my mind to. And I know I can do it because I've seen myself do it before and other things. So I decided in 2021 to start over with BeatStars and to really, really stick it through, trust the process. And ever since then, I started getting sales, started getting views on YouTube. And I'm like, OK, I know I can do this now. If I can make 50, 15 dollars to 50 dollars on one little beat, I can make 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 on another beat. I started doing the pandemic the second time and everything shut down. So I was able to really focus on what I want to do. And I'm like, I got to take this seriously. If I can't, if I don't do it now, I'm not going to ever do it. So start now. And I just kept going day by day. So for my mindset, that's the first thing I needed to focus on because you got to have a strong mindset. It's a mentality game as well. So I started reading a lot of books about changing your mindset from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. I started reading a lot of books about manifestation, manifest things, um, saying affirmations in the morning, just things to get me in a positive headspace. And when everything, something don't go my way or something negative happens, I try to find a positive out of it because there is positivity in everything. So just change your mindset. And I started thinking more like a business. Once I started thinking like a business, then I'm moving like a business. People respect me. And then that's when I started seeing a lot of sales as well. Because it's not a hobby. This is a business. You're a business owner. You're an entrepreneur when you sell beats. It goes both ways. Um, being a female producer, there's the pros and the cons. The pros is, yeah, they're interested because you're a female producer. And usually they don't come across a lot of female producers so they do want to hear they want to give you an opportunity and the cons is you are a female producer and they don't they like every time you say something this happened to me before i'm in a room full of guys i'm trying to get my input in you know because i'm the type of person i'm not going to sit there and just let everybody hop on a beat and i'm just sitting there just looking around no, i don't want to get on it too you know i want my career i want my publishing let me a hey, snare right there okay you got to add me on so i was just trying to give my feedback and i felt like they wasn't respecting me because i was a woman and that did happen before but i'm not going to let that deter me i know i'm amazing they didn't hear my music. I know if they would have heard my music, that would have changed because that's usually what happens. I play a beat. I don't got to say anything. I come in the room, play a beat. Oh, sh she's serious. Oh, no, she's real. And, you know, it's, it's, it's good after that. <laughs> Have confidence. Go in a room with confidence. You know the type of producer you are. You know, you could bring to the table. Don't let nobody you know, push you to the side or ability you or make you feel small. Make your voice heard. Be loud. You got to be bossy, be bossy, be aggressive. Show them that you just as good as everybody else in the room, probably even better <laughs> than anybody else in that room. And just, you know, hold your own. And it's possible. I, I did it. And I know you can do it, too. And, you know, have fun. Always have fun. If you're not having fun, then something wrong. Maybe the, maybe the energy ain't right in the room, especially with a whole bunch of other producers. But make sure you have fun at the end of the day. My first B cell was in 2021, September. So I started in February. So it was a little, you know, a little shaky, but they got the first one in September. It was during the pandemic when B stars will have um, live stream events. And they had one on Friday called uh, Buy My Beat on Friday. Friday Buy My Beats, I think that was the name of it. And Abe, the CEO of B stars, will go through a playlist of beats. And he was so nice, but he didn't buy everybody beat. He buy the ones he really liked. So I was like trying to get everybody's attention, like, eh, buy my beat, eh, try to go. So he, I think you picked me, or I was already selected, and then you played my beat, and then you was like, oh my God, this is amazing, da, 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 da. and then you brought it, and that was my ever first beat sell was with Beat Stars. And I was so happy, because ever since that beat start uh, sell happened, slowly it, other people started buying it. So it was like a domino effect. So thank you so much <laughs> for starting it. <laughs> it was very motivational, because I didn't have any sales. My very first sell, and it's from Abe. So I'm like, that's, I got the cosign, like, yes. Cause I was recording um, the live stream. I took that and I made it to content. I'm like, if Abe likes my beat and bite, you should like my beat and bite. So I would use that as, as content. And I just kept posting. It, it was so much motivation that I just made sure that I kept the schedule and be consistent with posting um, YouTube and then also posting everywhere. Cause you don't want to just post on one spot you want to be everywhere so you can fully fully find your audience 
and you know find a niche and stick to it. And my niche is R and B. I love R and B. And I just kept doing that, being consistent. And I start slowly seeing the sales grow and grow and grow. For me, I like to always try something new and make myself uncomfortable. I don't want to be comfortable. If you're comfortable, you're stagnant, you're not growing. You got to be uncomfortable. Step outside your comfort zone. So I'm always trying to do the next thing. I sell beats online. I made you know a good amount of money. Okay, what else can I do? Oh, let me make an album now. Let me start thinking of a producer and start thinking more of an artist. Let me learn how to engineer so I can record so it's easier for me to get in the rooms, easier for me to have artists come to me so I can make a beat and record them. And I can also make more money because I'm offering another services. So I'm constantly thinking more ways to grow, more ways to expand, not just be a person that make beats, but just try to tap in on everything. So I can be the best version of myself, which is outside of just making a beat. I'm Shaw the Goddess <laughs> and I love music. It felt amazing. I felt like a super producer. There's that conversation, are you a beat maker or are you a producer? And I just felt like I was bigger than all of that. I worked with an artist called Chelsea Love. She's an amazing artist. That's my artist, I'm her producer. Um, the girl can write, sing, and she's amazing. Um, so we started working on her EP. As soon as I'm done with the beat, the song is done. That's how fast she writes record her and then we started working on photo shoots how to make content to promote the ep and then we had a music video for a christmas song we did it was just amazing seeing everything from the beginning process of brainstorming coming up with ideas to the end process of okay this is a music video for a song that's already out and let's push it and we have content not only that we also perform the songs live since i play i'm on stage with her Cause she has a lot of songs with pianos and guitars and I just go and play it live. That's taking it from a different level. We started in the studio and now we're on stage performing in front of people the same songs that we created. It's a full circle moment and I love every part of it. It's one of the most scariest, but one of the most beneficial thing I have ever done in my life ever. Just throwing myself out there, not being shy. I am an introvert myself. I'm shy. I'm quiet, I'm timid, but I know for a fact that what I want to do, I can't be those things. I have to be vocal, I have to be present, I have to put myself out there so I can grow. I have a big goal in mind. I want to be one of the biggest producers ever, but also the biggest female producers ever. We have a couple of female producers, but I want to be one of the ones that's like the number one on top of everything. So I have to work extra hard because I'm a woman, but also that you know, being a female producer in the male dominant industry, you know, is, is very hard because we're not seen that much. We're out there, but we're not seen that much. So I want to be the face of that. So I have to put myself out there. I have to start doing it now. If I don't, then I won't ever get to where I'm trying to go. So get uncomfortable, do what you got to do to succeed. I love collaborating. Um, collaborating is the best way to grow because you learning from them, they're learning from you. And then whatever you make, they share with their network. And then whatever you make with them, share with your network. It's a great way to grow the fastest way. Collaboration is key, especially in the music industry. It's all about relationships. So networking is important. Get out there and talk. You just can't be behind your computer sending, you know, DMs, people, people, IGs, any social, social media that they might not ever see. You might send a loop to someone's email. They might not ever click one because everyone's doing that. Get out there, show your face. Um, and, Personal, in-person impressions is very important. So collaboration is key. I highly recommend it. And I love collaborating with other producers. One thing is the beat ID. I think that's amazing. Uh, I was able to track some people who use my beat without my permission. And I, you know, came with the, uh, reached out to them like, hey, I see you using my beat, you know, was able to, you know, send them my website and they was able to purchase it so I didn't have to take down the one song thank god but beat ID is, is very very amazing I love it I can just see where my beats at even if someone do buy my beats and I don't know what they're doing I can still locate it and find it and be like okay cool and then if I really like the song hey why not help promote it <laughs> it's a win-win so beat ID is like my favorite tool so far on BeatStars it just let me keep tab of, of where my beats are and how well they're doing because once you're able to find a beat, you can see how many views the beat or the song or TikTok has. And it's very, very resourceful. I reach out to the artists. And if I already build a relationship with them because they purchased my beat, I like to always keep 
tabs on everyone who buys my beat because I want them to succeed hands down so I would love to like reach out to them to see how they're doing see how the beats or the song that they uh, made is doing and just check up on them about their future projects you know if they want to work again in the future because returning customers are the best customers ever it's easier to get a sell with them because they already do business with you so they already know they already have that trust that they have when they buy your beats so just keeping and nurturing that relationship and making it grow into something beautiful and don't just forget about that person because they bought a beat you know keep tabs with them check up on them and just you know build some type of relationship because relationship is key in the music industry my sound is pretty much uh beautiful melodies beautiful chord progressions with a hard hitting drums and a groovy bass line. That's pretty much me right there. You get all that when you listen to me. Um, I just know what I like and I only make things that I like. I'm not trying to please anyone. I'm not trying to fit the latest trend because trend dies. I want to build a legacy. I want people to hear it and know, oh, that's Shaw's beat. I already know it before you hear the tag. So I stick to what I like and I'm open-minded, I experiment, but I'm making beats and music that I wanna hear and that, that, that I like. So that's my sound. When you hear a shot of God's beat, it's something that I made because that's what I wanted to make. I wanna continue growing on social media, building my brand, releasing my album, working with more artists. Um, I like to do projects. I'll make a song and all that stuff, but I want to lock in with the artists and make their whole projects. The biggest goal of mine is to win a Grammy and not just win a Grammy, win Grammy for producer of the year. A female producer has never done that. And that's something that I think about all the time. I'm obsessed with it. It's on my dream board. I write it down. I say it in the morning. So that's why I'm going so hard because that's something that I want to do for my legacy. Shout out to me.